join us to get real here at the Ecclesia Cafe Piano Bar. And uh, here's Pastor Jay. Welcome to Get Real 2000 and the Ecclesia Cafe Piano Bar and Bible Study. <laughs> and we're going to continue on. We're going to do it from here now in number 46 of our series here. And it's called Still So Dull. Here we go. I'm going to move over here so you can get these scriptures up here. Okay. Mark, in the NIV, Mark 7:14, it says, Again, Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen to me, everyone, and understand this, 15, Nothing outside a man can make him unclean by going into him. Rather, it is what comes out of a man that makes him unclean. And continuing on. NIV. Now Matthew is going to continue here. Matthew 15, 12. It says, Then the disciples came to him and asked, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when, you heard, when they heard this? 13. He replied, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots. 14. Leave them. They are blind guides. Wow. If a blind man leads a blind man, both will fall into the pit. You've probably heard that one before. Fifteen. Peter said, explain the parable to us. Sixteen. It says, are you still so dull? Now, one more. NIV, Mark. Seven. 18, starting halfway in B, says, Don't you see that nothing that enters a man from the outside can make him unclean? It's basically the same thing. This is Mark going on. 19, for it doesn't go into his heart, but into his stomach when it comes from the outside. And then out of his body. Oh, well. In saying this, Jesus declared all food clean. 20. He went on. What comes out of a man is what makes him unclean. 21. For from within, out of man's heart, comes evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. 23. All these evils come from inside and make a man unclean. Let's begin with Christians meeting together. Our church, in our church, the one we had up at, lake, up at the lake, we always called Sunday morning a time of celebration, like a party for the Lord. The New Living Translation in Acts 2.42, it says they joined with the other believers and devoted themselves to the apostles, teaching and fellowship, sharing in the Lord's Supper and in prayer. So that's really why we come together on a Sunday or whenever you do. Luke writes that all the believers would come together and have everything in common. They took care of those among them who were in need. If somebody was in need, they took care of them. In those days, they would meet every day in the temple courts, which could accommodate thousands of people. <laughs> they would also meet in small groups and homes for communion. That's breaking bread, remembering the, the uh, flesh and the body and the blood of Jesus, and dinner. And they really enjoyed being Christians. It seems that more and more friends and acquaintances would join up with them. They'd say, come along, you're going to love it, and became favorable to them. And with this, the Lord added daily to the number of those being saved. Because they wanted to be there. They loved it. They said, wow, these Christians have something I don't have. I want to be a part of this. But were they being saved because of those neat meals, those great meals they were getting, causing the whole city to have favor with them? 
Remember, nothing that enters the body has any effect on the heart or soul. We may get obese and sick from eating too much, but that is only the flesh. I believe it is by being together with people like this that causes a flow out of the heart to begin. They're just being around. Haven't you been around people like that? And, and you just start to become like them. And being in the presence of the Holy Spirit who is among them. That causes the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit to flow out of them. We'll see more of that. Which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Mm. And hearts surrendering to the Lord to be saved. So around being people with all of this love, peace, joy, patience, and kindness, and goodness, and all this, this caused them to, to start to flow the same way. And then, and then the, and this led to being saved. What comes out of a man is what makes him unclean. This is what Jesus said according to Mark. Here is another one of those thin lines that is hard to see unless you have eyes to see it. Our chronological study these the last few times have dealt with what is going into the body. Jesus started with the controversial teaching that we needed to eat his flesh, eat his flesh, and to drink his blood, see the kingdom of God. The people and most of his disciples did not understand that he did not mean into the stomach, <laughs> not to eat him into the stomach, and, and then they walked away from him. We need to take the flesh of Jesus and the blood of Jesus into our hearts and souls, not into our stomach, <laughs> dummies. Because just caring about what satisfies our stomach and our huge hunger drive will help us grow physically, but will not reward us with his kingdom. Jesus says that it will just pass through the body and come out the other end. <laughs> Spiritually, is simply to surrender into our own minds and heart the life, body, and crucifixion of Jesus Christ. This is how we eat his flesh and drink his blood. With his forgiveness through the blood he shed for us, which is all ours freely through our belief in faith and is what causes our hearts to flow with the fruit of the spirit that we said are we still so dull that we can't understand that it doesn't matter what foods we stuff ourselves with when we want to be physically healthy god would have us to use common sense while eating drinking, smoking, or using drugs, whatever. But he is basically interested in our souls, that our souls are not harmed by what we eat, but by what we think about, do, and say. Evil that could cause us not to enter the kingdom of God is now lurking in our hearts. That evil is just lurking there. We were born with an evil heart, brought about by Adam's disobedience. But we received a renewed heart and are justified through faith by the obedience of Jesus Christ at Calvary. Salvation eventually brings all who believe into God's kingdom. But when the Holy Spirit comes into our hearts, we are endued with the power of God to do as Jesus did. And this, in our lifetime, we can walk as subjects of the king in this life if we choose to and reap blessings while we still live in this body. It's not all that stuff out there that we have permission to enjoy. All things are permissible, Paul said, but not all things are beneficial. It is all the stuff in our hearts we need to deal with. Let's close with the psalm that may explain this whole thing. New Living Translation, Psalm 51, verse 10, says, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. 
11. Do not banish me from your presence, and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. 12. Restore to me again the joy of your salvation, and make me willing to obey you. Make me willing to obey you. 13. Then I will teach your ways to sinners, and they will return to you. 14. Forgive me for shedding blood. O oh God who saves, then I will joyfully sing of your forgiveness. 15. Unseal my lips, O oh Lord, that I may praise you. 16. You would not be pleased with sacrifices, for I would bring them. If I brought you a burnt offering, you would not accept it. 17. The sacrifice you want is a broken spirit. A broken and repentant heart, O oh God, you will not despise. Are we willing to turn to God and say, I'm a mess, but I'm yours. Lord, make the changes that are needed. I can't do it. I need you. But that's what she planned from the beginning, that I would be broken and that you would become much greater in my life. We'll see you next time. Now I live in all your promises And nothing seems worthwhile Except to be in your kingdom